Hello, hello. How are people doing today? Good morning. Hello. Ciao, baby loving. Hello, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Smoth, thank you so much for the two months. Is that natural yellowing? <laughs> People ask that a lot. Um, 6 a.m. there? Oh, wow. Wait. 6 a.m.? Where are you located that it's 6 a.m.? It's like Asia. Asia time. Uh, but the HHKB, um, it basically is yellowed by... Uh, I, I, I make this joke a lot. I make the joke that um, it's yellowed by a bunch of Japanese office salarymen uh, over the course of 10 years. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like a hot box. <laughs> because if you look carefully, check this out. Check, 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 the, check this uh, uneven bottom yellowing. You can see the feet were up normally, which is why they were not exposed, right? <laughs> but the top is like nice and evenly yellowed. This is like weird bug flying around. But yeah. So, yeah. Nice old HHKB, one of a kind. Not really. Uh, actually, if you look on like um, old, um, not old, sorry, uh, like uh, Japanese, like Yahoo auction listings and stuff. Um, it should be more apparent that there are more of those out there like because they're old and they've been like sitting in offices for so long They probably get a lot of natural light like a lot of sunlight. So I mean it's probably a mix of sunlight and yeah, maybe smoking <laughs> Because you know interest smoking is not no longer allowed in so many places now, but But now it's like, you know, <laughs> but I mean back then it was different. I added a, like a little overlay on the chat. Is that better? So you guys can see that the chat here has a little translucent overlay now. I thought that last time like it was like hard to see the the chat. So um, I added that just so that it was be, it was like a little bit more readable sometimes. Um, I did that. Uh, yeah, just been uh, trying to make some small adjustments to the stream because I. I'm noticing that my quality isn't super great either. Chingoya Pongoru Joseo. Hmm. 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 Wanna trade for my bongos? But Mr. Pirulito, I'm doing okay. I I've just been busy. Hey, Jeff Leopard, hello. See you again. Um, where are you from? I am located, I mean, I currently am in New York, New York City to be specific, United States. Um, but uh, I, I grew up elsewhere. I grew up in Mexico, the country. Milk Manu, hello, how are you doing? Depends on the desk mat? Yeah, for sure. That's why That's why I, I, I added the translucency because I was like, wait, some desk mats, like it's literally impossible to read the chat because it just blends right in. Uh, but so yeah, it, sh it should be better though. But anyhow, um, shall we get on to it? Getting ready to do some client work? Likewise, today we'll be doing a easy and simple build for a client. Well, it wasn't easy because um, I had to blue ball of these. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to open these all up. Um, uh, the client asked for me to assemble all the switches this time. So yeah, so these are assembled by myself. Um, well, they gave me like separated, um, you know, uh, they gave me like the Kale, um, I mean sorry, the Inver Pandas as well as the, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, 
um, Halo clears. Halo clears. Narrator, thank you so much for the um, Twitch Prime sub. Welcome back for two months. Uh, lubing is fun? Oh man, lubing. I'm not sure if lubing is fun. I think lubing is tedious, but I mean, I was teaching, actually, I was teaching Tiny. You know, Tiny from Tiny Makes Things. She does like um, keycap art. Uh, she, she does like um, clay as well as resin cast keycaps. Uh, so I was teaching her how to loop uh, switches yesterday. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but yeah, she now realized how tedious it can get. Uh, I think she did like 20 over like a bunch of hours because she was busy talking, but still. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad, but uh, you require a system, I feel, to get to do it efficiently. And yeah, Mr. Pirulito, um, this is genial, pero no lo esperaba. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely not expected because I definitely don't look very Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, born, born and raised in Mexico and speak Spanish fluently for sure. Could do a Spanish stream only, but that would be, uh, that would restrict the audience pretty, pretty dramatically. So I'm trying to keep it inclusive. Long stream with Diego is a good stream. <laughs> Are those that retool in their pandas? Uh, I assume that if they're retool, they don't have the. I think there might be original ones. I'm not sure. They still have the branding on them. Uh, how do that? How do I check that they're retooled? I actually don't know. They just gave me a box with. I mean, they gave me a box with the um, Halo clears. And then that one came in the mass drop box, and then the bag of pandas just came in the bag that said injured pandas. So, I don't know. Gets fun after 10k. Jesus. <laughs> loop station? I don't really use a loop station, actually. Uh, I was telling people that all I use is these things. Let me show you. This is my loop station. Top housings, springs. And, um, I mean, like, bottom housing, stems, and then all my springs go in this tub where I, uh, tub lube all my springs. I use, um, Victorinox oil, multi-tool oil. I just use that for spring lubing. But, yeah, I basically just shake them all up here, have the springs in there all the time, and then, you know, take them out with tweezers every time. Um, but, uh... But yeah, I just keep these in cups and stuff, um, and I just do them one by one. Um, that's my system. It works for me because I don't have to... Well, I guess the only like lube station I have is oh, this one here. Like, I have a 10 by 10, they're like this one here, but I only use it to put the switches on once they're already assembled, just for me to count them easily. But other than that, I don't really use uh, any lube stations, uh, like dedicated stations. Yeah, it depends on the workflow for sure though. Oh, XS Tech, hey, just wanna let you know that I picked up some H1s yesterday and used your code. Oh, thank you so much, I appreciate that. I'm glad that you were able to pick some because um, I know that um, people had, um, I mean, some people missed, missed out because they sold out the most quickly, I think, which is surprising because they're heavy, uh, but I guess people like the black on black aesthetic, so that's probably why. <laughs> Senor Opa Diego. <laughs> In Spanish, there's not too much people in this hobby, by the way. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Hey, Chat Lemon, thank you so much for the sub, man. Come back for five months. You must be one of the older people in the in the sub list, I think. Um, retold ones are palm. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Hmm. I couldn't tell. Um, they felt just as smooth as other pandas I've tried, though. Um, but yeah. All I have is trays, all I need is something to put all the Victorinox oil OP, yeah. TX tray for maximum efficiency? Yeah, TX oil is pretty good. Yeah. Might be streaming later, show you my process. Okay, I'll try to tune in. I'll, I'll try to tune in. Way, much, way too much lubing to do. I've seen people argue that so many colorful and cutie switches were released recently, so an all black switches was appeal switch was appealing. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, so the reason why the... I feel like H1s and the new like dry black switches are appealing because the all black aesthetic is because it replicates the MX black, right? Like, and the MX black is like the ever popular switch. So like, at least for linears, right? It's like the, oh my gosh, you gotta find smooth MX blacks. And so like H1s pretty much replicate that. So I, I, I could see why that's a nice sleek aesthetic. Plus there's so many like, like black anodized keyboards or black case keyboards, right? So. 
H1 equals dry black different spring. Um, the dry black are slightly uh, lighter. H1s are like 70, like 8 gram and uh, in bottom out, which, which is like about MX black. So MX blacks are about 78, 80 grams in bottom out. There's a big variance there. Um, and dry black switches are like 72 in bottom out, I think. So they l made them a bit lighter than normal. So yeah. 600 in Q, wow. All right, well, let's get to building, shall we? H1 springs are for Chad fingers. That's kind of toxic. Hey, Tally Pino. Thank you so much for the follow. All right, so... So here we just have a box with the PCB and the plate, so pretty simple. Uh, I already looked into these, so this one already should have VIA on it, uh, so that's good. And um, so just, you know, good old QMK PCB from KBD fans, uh, I believe it uses uh, USB-C, so that's nice. And we have a nice brass plate here. Um, I spring swap everything. Yeah, me too. I pretty much think spring swap everything to like 60, 62, 63.5, 65, sometimes 67. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, took a week off a few took a week off to do some for myself <laughs> yeah I, I doing loot for myself is actually kind of rare um, mainly because I, I I get busy doing stuff for customers too uh, let's see so these are the cherry ones and these are the KVD fans ones I'll put these aside um, but yeah let's see customer struggle is real yeah for sure do you have some foam, case foam it looks like. Here we have a case. How many people use stock springs? So I use stock springs for like um, like alpacas or like um, Nolives had like decent stock springs I think. Um, so yeah, I use stock springs whenever they're light enough for me. And I can always lube the springs so for me it's not a concern. Like people say like, oh they have more spring crunch and they kind of suck or whatever. As long as they are about the same weight, a weight I can tolerate, uh, it's good for me. So I, that's pretty much what I work by. Um, but yeah. But I agree, um, opening up your... Um, Opening up your uh, your switches is the first step, and it's the like I feel like it's the is the first step everyone you know you should take, and then like it'll get easier once you kind of like adopt the system for it. So yeah. Yeah, stock stock the waiting is fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this is the case as you can see. I'm like noticing that like. It only has like two screws on there, but I'm gonna guess these are the screws for it. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. I guess they only have these two screws to hold it together, but otherwise it's actually just um It's still it's still just like the way they ship it. It's easier to ship this way, I suppose. Sometimes they do the QC and they only close it with two <laughs> or or four. At most, I feel. I, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen people do that. Like, I've seen, like, DJR boards come with, like, four screws and then the rest, like, in a bag. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes uh, QC easier and faster, rather. Okay, so that's the bottom piece. Pretty anodizing looks pretty good. So, let's just take a look. Um... Small small blemishes inside. So okay, like small, like it looks pretty good. Uh, small blemishes maybe like I uh, can't see. Oh, right there you can see maybe, and then like right over here. But they're interior blemishes, so not bad. Um, outside looks totally fine. Uh, this thing here is replaceable with accent pieces, so pretty. KBD seventy five, honestly, really good bang for your buck. Uh, as far as the uh, budget board goes, in my opinion.
Um, but yeah. Let's see. It's, yeah, this is the acrylic piece, the diffuser. And then top piece is just a frame. It's just a nice little frame. So very simple, very simple board. Um, has nice alignment pins too, so it just works. All right, just gonna put it aside for now. Let's get on to working on things. Let's see, have I missed anything? I don't think so. Early stream today? Yeah. Hey, Singapore, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah, early stream though. Um, Yo, Zombumon, hello. How are you doing? It's good to see you here. I guess I am streaming early enough for you to be around. So that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, seriously, question is up so early today. I don't know, I never really liked the KBD 75. I stopped recommending it because it's tray mount. Um, I know it is and all, but at the same time, I honestly think it's a pretty good deal. Oh, we have snap-ins today. Or clip-ins. Cool. Alright. That's kind of nice. I don't have to use the washers. So, let's see. How many do we need? One. Uh, two. Three, and I think this should be seven years, so four, like that. I think that's all I need. So many stabs. I think there are two sets of stabs. <sighs> Weird bug flying around. It's kind of harmless though. Um. But, I mean, yes, there are a lot of screw holes on the KVD-75, and I know that it is a tray mount. Um, but I feel like for the budget, it does everything it needs to do. Like, it's a decent layout that people can, people find appealing. It's also, like, it has, like, underglow, where people might want that. Like, it has QMK and VIA now. Like, it's compatible for VIA now. Um, like, it's decently priced. Um, it sounds okay, actually. It sounds pretty good. They, uh, and the and they, like the quality of the case itself is not bad at all. So, um, 1.5, 7, 1.5, 1 1.5. Yeah, we're doing 7U today. We're doing 7U. That's that was a preference. There's also another tiny detail. It's available. Yeah, exactly. Not not a tiny detail at all. In fact, um, yeah, just. Just the fact that it's like widely available is, is super nice. Um, so, yeah. Six thirty a.m. in Australia. Goodness, that is really early. Although that's about the time I wake up as well these days so I'm not far into waking up early now at least lately I'm not a morning person however I, I have to wake up early because to do work I haven't clipped a stab in more than six months Goodness, what's going on outside uh, is that because uh, you've been using Durog or zeal stabs I assume or EPBT stabs Gonna make myself an espresso because Jim K fucked up. <laughs> I I have so many uh like cherry stabs, so it's actually cherry, not even GMK. Can't blame it on GMK actually at all because GMK has nothing to do with the process. It's all cherry. GMK just purchases from them, and we just buy from uh, GMK. Funny that we don't buy directly from Cherry, but you know, they would probably be like, oh yeah, you gotta buy like um. Like a million units for it. So, yeah. Stupid MOQ. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, just like the switches, right? Um. But, anyhow. Um. 
Hey, Mr. Fancy Waters, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Very nice of you, and welcome. Um, all right, let's start with lubing the, the steps. Oh yeah, I should um, announce that as of today's stream, we have a new sponsor. Cannon Keys is a new sponsor of the stream. So please, uh, uh, here's a shout out to Upas from Cannon Keys who reached out and offered to um, offered me a position as an affiliate of Cannon Keys. And yeah, so we have a, an affiliate link now. Uh, it's in the sponsors command. And um, yeah, uh, I'll talk about the stuff on there right now, but basically like they have uh, like GMK bread and a bunch of death mats as well as SA Mizu running. So, you know, if you're interested in those sets, you should uh, check out Cannon Keys. Hey, Kioni! Yo, how are you? Thanks for the Twitch, uh, I mean, thanks for the um, tier one sub. Welcome back for two months. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. Saw the gaff caps you had that deserved the sub. <laughs> <laughs> you said because of the gaff caps? That's hilarious. I mean, I should show you more caps, I guess. Ooh, pause the homie. Hey, sub Diego, thanks for building my board. Oh, yeah, no problem, Thor. Of course. Happy to help. Upas or Upas underscore? You have no idea. What are those keycaps on your keyboard? Uh, those are the original uh, HHKB keycaps. So they just come with the board. And uh, the the yellow ones are uh, just a WASD, like a WASD uh, set in yellow. They're also made by like Real Force slash uh, PFU. Um, and the two uh, artisans on there are Clack Factory keycaps, uh, like in the drunken colorway. So they're like resembling like a uh, beer. They're like beer colored. Doing good, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much, Keone. Um, You know, just uh, been busy actually. It's, it's just been busy lately, um, like with personal things and, and whatnot. But you know, it's going. Um, just trying to, trying to stay busy and trying to stay um, proactive about stuff. I feel like just being at home for, for a while has been kind of tiresome for sure. Uh, but I'm trying to keep a routine going. That way, I like I don't have to think twice about it. What are those artisans on your macro pad? Raindrop, kind of looking cool. So they are, they're called moon drops. Uh, so the moon drop sculpt is actually made by Night Caps. Uh, like ETF, eat the food, is the one of the, one of the two people behind Night Caps. So Night Caps is a duo of people. It's Marcus and Kirsten. Um, eat the food and his partner and uh, they've been around for a few years uh, they also make like fugus and fugthulus and, and menlos and other sculpts uh, you can find them on instagram at nightcaps.keycaps uh, but yeah uh, the moon drop is one of the sculpts that they i guess they don't do so often now but they used to do um, they release them maybe like once a year i would say like they have a dedicated sale for moon drops i feel like once a year They're pretty cool though, and they make quite a lot of them, so. Miniature figurines, poggers! Hell yeah. I really need a poggers command. I mean, uh, a poggers emote. I should add the poggers emote on like, um, better TTV or Franker face. Yeah, it's been, um, I haven't added new emotes in a while. You'll be lurking. Sounds good. You should see his Taro X more. Is probably his best cap of all time. <laughs> no bias there, Tefon. No bias at all. You know, just just casual. You know, Ta Taro X more best cap of all time. You know, not a bold claim. It is a very nice cap though. Like I love the colors on it, and honestly, it's so so well done. 
Yo, UB. What's up? What's up, homie? Eight months. Oh, wow. I think you you are probably one of the first subs. Uh, yeah, you have a founder tag. So eight months must be the longest that I've had a sub. Wow. It's already been eight months. That's crazy. Time flies, guys. So that means I hit affiliate last year, at the end of last year, right around holiday season. Taff in the chat, more keycap gods than I expected. <laughs> keycap. Taff, you're a keycap god now. A keycap god. No founder's badge. Hey, what's up, Obsidian? How are you doing today? It's a hump day. It's a Wednesday. You hear that, Diego? I made it. I know. You've made it, man. I mean, I think you are pretty active in a lot of chats, though. So I, I could see that. Um, you're super active in like a billion places. I, I honestly can't follow all these different places anymore. <laughs> it's just so much going on, honestly. I would like a Founders Batch in the Silver Blue Good Club. <laughs> Geikster, hello. Um, Silver Blue Good Club. Oh man, that would be a interesting name for a sub club. Could name it that. Although I do like so many other colors as well, um, so it kind of gets me thinking. It's like, what if someone doesn't like those? It'll be like, oh, I'm not gonna sub anymore. Sorry, I hate silver. I, I'm a gold kind of person. It's like all all this all this money, and I only get silver. All this money and I don't get red instead of blue. I'll be like, yeah, sorry, man. I'm a I'm a I'm a Pokemon Red kind of guy. I'm a Charizard kind of guy. I'll be like, feels bad. Although to be honest, I played Pokemon Yellow first. Uh, that was the better of the three starter Pokemon series of games, in my opinion. A Pikachu that follows you, more access to the entire roster of the original 150 Pokemon. I picked Pokemon Blue first on release, any release I should say. Yeah, I played Yellow though. Yeah, Yellow was fun. I mean, they're all good, but I personally am biased towards Yellow. I I will be honest. I don't follow Pokemon anymore. Uh, I never actually played the uh, trading card game because I wasn't like I didn't grow up with it. Uh, like more specifically, I lived in Mexico and Pokemon trading card game was not big down there. <laughs> um, it was also kind of expensive, um, so nothing I could afford. Um, but I did like borrow like my friend's Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color, so that's why I, that's why I got to. I mean like an original Game Boy, so like that's why I got to play Pokemon Yellow. And then, um, like, obviously we played on emulators as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Pokemon, I followed maybe, like, I, I played a lot of the games, but I did not follow, like, the main story and stuff after maybe, like, the Johto series and stuff. Yeah, I think that's that's about right, <laughs> where I stopped. <laughs> so, like, two, like, two, like, like, maybe, like, 300 Pokemon, and that, that was about it for me. <laughs> I don't even know how many Pokemon there are now. People actually play the card game as a game? No, people mostly collect cards. But collecting cards is expensive. So, I actually, oh! A, 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 a trading card game that I did play. I played two different trading card games back uh, home when I was growing up. Uh, the first one that I played was Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading card game. Um, so Yu-Gi-Oh! I actually was uh, a big collector for Yu-Gi-Oh! I. <laughs> If you guys know me that I collect in keyboards, you guys could... I think my precedent for collecting in keyboards was Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, like Yu-Gi-Oh was the precedent of all this. Like, I collected so hard. And, like, I actually play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so I would play, like, in the state level and stuff. 
like in the state tournaments. Um, yeah, so Yu-Gi-Oh was huge, like in my early life. Like I, I played for years. Um, I was in the meta until maybe like the machine deck was phased out, like, uh, like Chimera Tech and like, uh, like a lot of the elemental hero stuff, kind of was phased out, and like the 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 what is that the the, the gem monsters? Maybe after that I stopped playing. But yeah, pretty huge on competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is a joke. People in the U.S. seem to say that, but it was so huge in in Mexico. So like you know. Uh, hey, yo, Sav, what's up, man? Uh, thanks so much for the Twitch Prime sub. How are you doing? So after GX, I'm assuming? Yeah, so, uh, right, right around there. Um, all I know is the Exodia thing, need all five and all that. Yeah, I mean, that's like the first few episodes of the series, too, so... Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I do you still have your Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Uh, my, um, my parents have my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, because uh, I left them, like, back at home so like with them uh so they've been having they've they've been keeping them since uh i've been wanting to request them like to like to pull them out of storage uh but i haven't bothered doing that because i know it's a burden for them to do that so but at some point i will definitely recover them and just take a look at them and stuff i i, I collected them and like kept, kept a few like decks that i was very attached to and the rest kind of like i got rid of over time Keeping them silently looking up prices online. <laughs> I say it's a joke as it's not the best competitive card game. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think in the US, like Magic is obviously the, the biggest one, right? Magic the Gathering. Uh, Down back home, like, yeah, Magic the Gathering was also big. But also, again, Magic the Gathering is so expensive. Uh, Like, you know, there's some cards that are just, like, ridiculous. Like, absolutely bonkers kind of market uh, for Magic. So, yeah. Um, uh, I also played a, oh, I played an interesting Hispanic trading card game called, basically the translation for it is like Myths and Legends, Mitos y Leyendas. It's based on mythology characters and stuff and the, and the, and the like actual dynamic of that particular game, like the mechanics of the game were pretty interesting. Um, I really liked it. The art was spectacular on the cards. Um, if you guys ever ch have a chance to look it up, you can Google it. Uh, probably phased out game by now. Like this is old, um, but it was it was great stuff to collect because like there are super pretty cards and they're based on a lot of the like myths and like mythology stuff that I would like like read in my history books and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like Aztec warriors and like Quetzalcoatl and like all that stuff. Um, like Inca warriors and like like a lot of ancient civilization stuff pretty cool stuff and like you know like Attila the Hun and like um, like Alexander the Great and like you know based on history and mythology but yeah but yeah uh, magic was not my thing uh, mainly because I, it was just inaccessible to me so I magic the gathering is just not my just not my jam. It's not. It's just something I don't know about. Basically, I'm just not informed at all. Never got into it. Um. What was your favorite card in Yu-Gi-Oh? Hmm. Pro probably Chaos Emperor Dragon. Probably. Or the original, or, or the or the ultra rare Dark Magician of Chaos. Probably that one was really good. Um, I did have some like nice original cards though. Yeah, like I had like the original like Mirror Force. I had like the Pharaoh Servant First Edition Jinzo. Um, yeah. I remember my first ultra rare. I mean, like my first secret rare pull from a booster pack was uh, what is that? Imperial Order. Is, is that the one? The one from Pharaoh Servant. I remember I n knew nothing about it. Almost got scammed for it. And then it got banned from the meta anyway, so... But yeah, I was huge into Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I... I can share a link, actually. Hold up. I have a, I have a link for my Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh stuff. Uh, I just need to... Look up the link. I have. A, I have an. I have a, a like an Imgur link for it. 
Um, but like, it's basically my old collection. Uh, and like, I, the, the photos are super potato because I actually took these photos like in 2010, <laughs> like right before, like like right before I moved to the U.S. and uh, had to store everything. So please excuse me for that. Bring back Yata, yeah. So there's my collection. Hey, yo, Sour, what's up, man? Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Hey, welcome, welcome. Haven't seen you around, I feel. I know you're around still designing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I mean, I see your stuff everywhere, actually. <laughs> I can tell just from like the art and like and, and like all the stuff you're doing. Uh, in fact, Sour, um, Sour uh, has a set running right now on Group by named GMK Pono. Uh, GMK Pono is a uh, stock colors N9 and um, I believe 3C, which is the the same like like pinkish color from 909, and uh, that set is currently running on on Dixie Mech, uh, who is one of the sponsors of the stream. So and has some sick death mats. I actually really like the death mats, and as well as the Rama cap, uh, the the dark one. So super cute stuff. Um, that I will likely order, at least the dust mats even. I, I'm probably gonna get the set, but I need to save money. <laughs> um, but yeah, some cool stuff by Sour. Sour is also a designer who made my logo, the, the logo down here in the corner. Um, so yeah. All Japanese cards too. So the um, yeah, so the first side of that of that binder in that album is all my OCG cards from the Japanese stuff. You even got the God cards. <laughs> yeah, I was a, and can you tell I was a very uh, hardcore collector even since I was a kid. Um, I I pretty much ran a business with it. <laughs> I traded like every day like I went I like sneaked out of home to go to the market like to go to like where all the people would gather and trade and sell and buy and trade and sell and buy and trade and sell and buy over and over and also like put to play tournaments and stuff I was a very bad child in that regard but um, it was just it was, it was fun <laughs> it was a fun time fun times But yeah, uh, I did uh, get to collect quite a bit back then. Uh, I basically, and then later on, I met this Japanese collector who had all like the hobby league cards and stuff. Man, he really hooked it up, and he was actually a very good friend of mine. Uh, he became a very good friend of mine later on. Um, I helped him with some work stuff. Uh, he was like a translator for like Nissan, I think, like a Nissan manufacturer uh, down where I was living, and so. You came really close, and he obviously like helped me with cards and stuff. But uh, yeah, I just I just know it was like it's like a fond memory of that time. Uh, and like he would tell me all about like tournaments in Japan, which were obviously like the OCG was completely different from the trading card game in the U.S. Like the meta was completely different, the ban lists were different. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that that was that was a uh, my trading card game period. Kind of was like through late started from like late elementary school all the way to like end of middle school, early high school, and then in high school I pretty much just dropped them, like I retired, quote unquote. But yeah, I was huge into that stuff. I like to collect. Um, uh, now I don't really. Uh, Endeavor in anything like that, but yeah, I switched to Magic the Gathering. Made three thousand dollars from do from doing predicting. Oh, from predicting of when cards would spike. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that if you understand the market really well, you can make a lot of money for sure. I mean, I I, I did like make money from trading, selling, and stuff like that in Yu-Gi-Oh as well. Also, like back then, Yu-Gi-Oh was actually popular, so like cards did hold a decent amount of value. Like some of the stuff I had was like pretty expensive but I managed to like you know get it for cheaper or like trade and I mean not much different from like whatever collector's market you find out there um, but I mean obviously it dipped after Yu-Gi-Oh 
I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh had a lot of reprint cards, and so values dipped pretty pretty significantly, and also like the game meta itself kind of got screwed up over time, got too complex, and also uh, was not very compatible with like previous um, like previous like releases, and so like people kind of started ditching it after a while because it was like either hard to keep up or it just like not fun anymore. Like it was reduced down to like certain strategies that were very like cookie cutter, and yeah, people stopped playing. I think, at least that's what I heard from people who like did still play for a while after I left. The yellowing on the HKB looks great with that clack. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's why I love this HKB. It also types really nicely. Um, it's it's it has like nice snappy domes. Well, yeah, like very comfortable domes actually. Just 45 gram. Uh, nothing special besides lubing and silencing. Um, yeah. Could you use Japanese cards in tournaments? No. So if you're playing by the trading the, the TCG meta, which is the North American meta or the worldwide meta, you cannot use any of the Japanese cards. That was not allowed. The Japanese cards basically had their own set of rules. Uh, because some of the prints were also also had different effects, so like some of the prints actually had like a lot of the stuff that you see on like the like the TV series, like the secret effects and stuff that people would mention on like the TV series, uh, would come up on some of the Japanese cards. So uh, yeah, you were not allowed to use those. Not to mention, obviously, because you can't read them, like or some people cannot read them. It's disadvantageous to like do that to other people, you know, like play play cards like people don't know like the exact effects for just because you know you say like oh it's in the text but they can't read it <laughs> so yeah did you ever win any tournaments yes i did um i i played at the state level so i won like my regional tournaments like my city and uh local like um local star game tournaments and stuff you had to like like qualify so yeah i got like the max level i played was like around like state state level and then, yeah, I got disqualified pretty quickly after that because it was really hard. Some people were, like, really good. And also, it's, like, a big game of luck as well because, you know, it's got to have that, you know, heart of the cards. So, yeah, that luck doesn't follow you. Uh, and despite the strategies you might have, it, it, can, it can screw you up really badly. And, I don't know, I feel like I was too young to understand the meta as well. Uh, like, some people were just so good at it. And like really like tore it down so yeah tough my package from kbd just came in this morning I'm gonna try my very first build it's a seven day turnaround on shipping considered fast from them oh yeah seven day turnaround is really fast from china and like probably like this is like what dhl or fedex yeah no that's pretty fast um I really liked the Yu-Gi-Oh anime growing up. I loved the Yu-Gi-Oh anime growing up. I watched the Yu-Gi-Oh anime like three times, all in full. That's like 220 some episodes. <laughs> I, I was a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Like that's there's no there's no I cannot deny it. Like I was I was so much of a fan. I had my dual disc. Like yeah, I was I was a nerd. But yeah, uh, I didn't watch after Egyptian God arc. I mean that was the best arc for sure. Um, yeah, I pretty much only watched up. Uh, I I watched the original series. I did not watch GX or anything after that. So yeah, the Egyptian God arc, uh, like the last duel, like that was it. I never watched uh, GX though fully. Like I only watched maybe a little bit of it, and then I stopped. Cause I it, I, I just kind of got bored really. It was just not my thing anymore. My Valentine. <laughs> nice. I also really like Digimon Season 1 and 2. Yeah, Digimon Season 1 and 2 and the movies uh, were... And the movie was great. The first movie, the 2000 one. That one was really nice. I, I like that one.
Omnimon, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Good times. Man, that's such a throwback. I actually don't even remember so many of the names, but if I see it, I'm like, oh yeah. I remember. Like obviously I remember like all the all the typical ones like War Greymon and like all those. Um <clears throat> How good is the quality of this kit? The KBD seventy five is pretty good. It's pretty good. Raper ninety, uh just won't have as nice switches only going with gat yellows gat yellows are great man um gat yellows have are fantastic switches yo anyone see my greek mage yo <laughs> oh my god calling me out um uh, yes i know it is like late july and we still do not have greek beige <laughs> but i assure I, I can assure you that we will hopefully have it by august and that's I'm, I'm waiting for an update um i'm hoping for an update soon um but yeah we'll hopefully have it by august and well at least there's no space bars in that kit so people can complain about space bars hopefully right <laughs> hopefully we hopefully everything will go well and there will be a nice little kit for people to use honestly pretty excited for it what color case do you get? Um, so this is a client's, uh, but I believe this is a... Is this silver or gray? It looks gray to me. The pics of GMK Warp are crazy, all a lot worse than any PVT I've seen. I'll be honest, it's just a... It's, it's about as bad as PVT I've seen. I've seen pretty bad PVT out there. But the problem, like... The problem, yeah, it's just like so many kids are affected by this. Um, I think that's the main issue for me. It's just like so many kids are affected by by that, and so yeah, it worries me that um, what worries me the most is that GMK won't do too much about it. I mean, my expectation as it would be that hopefully GMK will just replace them, uh, but it is like thousands of kids we are talking about here, so like thousands and thousands of keys, which means that. Ultimately, the issue is gonna be that it's going to delay all these other group buys as well. Like, like you know, it it puts GMK at a very questionable position right now. Like as to like how they react about it. And so we'll see. We will see. Um, Olivia shipping soon too. Hmm, yeah. Um, yeah, Dracula, Olivia, there's a bunch of sets that should be shipping out soon, right? So. Alright, let's test these stabs now. So, we got. Backspace. Enter. Um, is it here? Wouldn't be it would be in GMK's great financial interest to fix as possible. It's both a great financial interest as well as a great financial loss for them to reproduce those keys and to pay the labor to do that. It's a lot of work too. So yeah, uh, iffy position to be in if you are on GMK's team of engineers and as well as in any executive position. I mean, just a very precarious position to be in. Um, I, I I just hope that they can. They will like work it out. Um, I hope they're responsible about it. But we'll see. We'll see what kind of compromises we reach. I don't think there's been any particular announcements other than GMK Alter that had erroneous colors for the alphas, and so they have to remake all those. So they basically promised to do so. We'll see. We'll see. Doesn't ABS have a higher melting temperature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely difficult, more difficult to fix. It is possible, but definitely difficult. And it basically means it's just more finicky and a more delicate process. Yeah, that's 
sounds okay. I doubt they retool TBH. They have too much money to make. There has to be a lot more anger to fix it. Mm, is it possible to get rid of the warp yourself? It is though. I mean, it is it is possible to do it, but yeah, it's just a delicate thing. Like, what I would personally suggest is something like, um, let's say you have, let's say you have a setup like this, and the idea would be to heat this guy up in like hot water. Obviously, you know, use tweezers or something to not have to hold this hot thing because don't burn yourself. Um, you know, hot water. Um, I wouldn't try to just bend it with my hands or anything. I would actually, what I would do is um, maybe don't use a PCB necessarily, but basically you just need a stabilizer of that particular size that you're trying to fix. And what I would suggest is like put it on the stab, like put it on the stab, like, you know, that's, oops, I actually think I put it in the wrong position. But yeah, you basically put it on the stab and you put like something heavy on top. Like you could put like um, like a book or you know something heavy that will hold it in place in a straight position. And the reason I use a stab is because it's going to hold those two sides, right? The two edges in place. So that's what I would want to do. Do you know the earliest set that was affected by this? Yeah, I think it is white on black from drop. The lube on stabs comes off so quickly. QQ. Two months of heavy use and my stab's starting to rattle. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Actually, I haven't experienced that as much, but I also use my keyboards pretty heavily, but... Um, is this my favorite NA keyboard builder, says Soran? Wow. Head moderator of Teha Types says that his favorite NA uh, keyboard builder is myself. Well, that is a flattering and uh, that is a flattering statement. I appreciate it, but isn't this like not the right thing to say? <laughs> oh, it looks like this stab is slightly off. Hold up. Okay, there we go. Better than Teehee types. <laughs> God. Ooh, it's getting kind of warm. Oops, sorry. It's getting kind of warm here. My first time watching you and I can say that you're the fastest lubing the stabs. Um, I pretty much lube the stabs just to the point where they don't rattle. So, I mean, one thing is for sure, I try to ask the people I build for how they feel about the stabs when they receive the board. Because like during transit, there's some time between the, like, between the time I finish building, uh, I like test the board, I like take photos of it, do a typing test, whatever you want and then I send it out, right? So maybe it'll take like, maybe that's like a week long period before they get the board, um, like if they're, if they're in the United States. And I always ask them how they feel about the stabs because if they tell me like, hey, like I got the board and the stabs suck, I kind of take a little offense to it in the sense that like I tried, but I it's, it's constructive criticism because it means that I'm not doing a good enough job for even like that extent to like not work out. So like stabs for me, like I, I focus on stabs a lot. Um, that, that's been kind of like my main thing. Like I try to trying to get the stabs consistent across many builds. I, 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 I've been like more careful about how like how much I'm applying and 
I definitely think that for, for stabs at least, like, more can be helpful because it's not like switches. It's not like switches where, like, less is more and, like, if you apply too much, like, it can get easily goopy. And, like, easily, like, um... Easily off. Um, so, and, like, because these parts are moving all the time. But yeah, in lubing anything though, I would say that, yeah, you just want to be consistent. Like, want to try to be equivalently applying things everywhere. I attack you in an important thing on Instagram. I'll check it out. Does anyone know why static is in my headphones when I open a new tab? Is this like a random thing? That's kind of odd. I mean, is this like any time? Like, if, even if you're not watching stream, not doing anything? Because if it's streamed, then I'll check my audio. I'll reset my audio. I mean, there is a bit of room noise right now because my AC is on, just FYI. I wish I had a heater, it's freezing. Well, that makes sense since you are down under in the southern hemisphere. So it's winter. It's like dead in the winter right now. Um, that's that's kind of awful, actually. But I actually hate the summer. Uh, I actually dislike the summer more than I dislike the winter. Winter, I can at least uh, bundle up. Summer, there's only so much you can take off and also feel comfortable still because if it's humid, then, you know, it's GG. I... I dislike the summer especially like around here because it's so humid it's been hot lately too like here in the northeast of the u.s all right cool i think those are fine now it is so hot. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really hot lately. It's been one of the hotter summers I've had here. My 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 electric bill is going to be no joke this summer. I can I can already I can already tell. I see people are troubleshooting Mr. Reaper's sound. I, but yeah, there could be some electric interference. I, I certainly know that my system has some interference as well somewhere. Like occasionally when I like have devices plugged in, I'll hear a bit of static through the, like the, like through my like monitor, um, like audio monitor. So I could tell that, you know, it has to do something with electrical interference, but it doesn't happen often. It's not something that I hear all the time. So. I haven't felt the need to address it in a like specific way. Although I've heard that like for road mics, like the ones I like the one I'm using currently, um, there has been like a grounding issue before, but mine doesn't seem to experience like doesn't seem to have it, so I've kind of left it as is. It really depends on your motherboard. I see. I guess that can, I guess that that would make sense. Oof. is slightly bent from the inside, which is kind of bad. What do you do outside of building awesome keyboards? Um, I uh, do research. 
um, in like biomedical sciences, and um, and I study, I suppose, <laughs> because uh, I'm a student. So yeah, I'm a grad student. And I study, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of my jobs. I spent a lot of time doing that, I guess. Uh, wait a sec. I need to just check if I'm doing. Am I doing regular caps? Yeah, regular caps lock today. That played only supports step caps? No, this supports both stepped and regular. I'm just glad this build isn't split backspace. So I'll say my opinion on split backspace. Split backspace is awesome in general. However, I do think it looks bad on 75% and larger layouts because you basically end up with an extra key in the alpha cluster that you have nothing to do with. Like. You have to fill it with some sort of either modifier or something something else that you basically program on there. But basically otherwise you would end up with like a double tilde. And in my opinion, that looks bad when you introduce it as a keycap. Um, so yeah, anything at or above 75%, I prefer to just put full backspace on it. So TKLs with split backspace, nope. TK, I mean like 75% with split bas backspace, nope, not for me. Uh, hell yeah, and hell no on like 1800s and that kind of stuff. Like, you just don't need it. So, split backspace is nice. Uh, I, I find it comfortable on HHKB on 60% and sometimes 65%. But not, def I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on anything larger than that. Yo, cheesy ball sack. What's poppin' daddy? Okay. Alright. Thank you so much for tier one sub. <laughs> Welcome back for two months. Um, do you think that a mechanical keyboard is worth it even when I don't know how to write with all ten, as in like ten fingers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so the motivation behind mechanical keyboards, I think the video by by Deha types like Nathan, he described it pretty well. But it really is like if you're spending a lot of time in front of your computer. If you're spending a lot of time like typing away stuff, right, for work, for whatever reason, and you're seeking like a better experience in like using your input devices, right? Such so as like people like go for like better like, you know, just like better monitors or like better speakers or like better mice, so, you know, like it could be anything, right? Um, better controllers, you know, whatever it might be. Um, it's basically that same experience. Like you're trying to improve that experience of like inputting something into your device. And if you want that, then I think mechanical keyboards are totally worth it. Even if you're, yeah, you might be like doing the hunting and pecking kind of typing style where you only use like two or three fingers or whatever. But you know, as you as you type on it or as you gain more interest in it, like you'll you'll improve, you know. So I would say, why not? There's a bunch of people. With huge collections that only use a few fingers, yeah, 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 I mean, like, it doesn't matter. Like, that's your choice. Like, whether you want to improve your typing, that's a different, that's basically a whole different problem that is separate from, like, owning a nicer mechanical keyboard, or, like, a keyboard in general. Like, it just, the, the hobby in general was born out of, yes, 
the the reality is that gaming of course brought huge interest into it like gamers were like oh mechanical keyboards are cool um but also like there are like people who are like in vintage collections like vintage collecting right uh who are also like oh hey like um we can actually collect these things because they were nicer quality before and you know like now we use like these membrane keyboards are not as nice um etc uh, so, so, the, so the argument still stands though, like overall what people seek out of these keyboards is just to have a better typing experience or sometimes to just collect new things, but I mean, functionally speaking, they still fail their purpose if you're just trying to improve on the device that you're using. Uh, oh, I opened a can of worms, is this about the audio? <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't matter how you type as long as you enjoy the hobby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. A defect ice turret. Alex Odo's types like a dinosaur. He said it himself. I know about the Alex Odo's typing test. The Jurassic Park theme one. I've, I've heard of it. I still haven't tried it myself, actually. I suck at it. I would suck at it because I don't type like that. I use my th only use my thumb for spacebar. Does anyone use a right thumb to type? I use my right thumb for spacebar. Keyboard store for the feel and sound. It looks not using proper home row technique. <laughs> hey, that's kind of mean. Uh, okay, I think this should be right. But yeah, I'm a right thumb spacebar user. What do you feel about 150 gram springs? So actually, there is a client who's been who's been sending me parts, and they include like 180 gram springs or something like that. I was like, okay, if that's what you want, all right. But I mean, what I feel about them? I mean, they're silly heavy. Uh, I think it's impractical and probably would hurt your fingers. But if that's your choice, then that's fine. It's all preference. I search and destroy with my pinky. I own. I got a Razer or Nata Chroma. I thought that I would get a better experience, but it feels like a memory keyboard. With the only difference being that the keys click. There we go. You have, you have discovered, you have been enlightened that typing on a mechanical keyboard is more than just the clicking and the look and the RGB and and all that. I do think it's more about yeah the sound and the feel and the look. And, like, they don't have to be fancy, you know? They don't, like, mechanical keyboards do not have to be fancy to be nice. Like, there's many ways to do budget mechanical keyboard building. So actually, someone I know, um, what's his name? Sam, uh, what's his Twitch, what's his Twitch, um, tag? Um, shoot. Uh, there's... There's this, there's this uh, Twitch streamer. Uh, his name is Sam. Um, he also is a keyboard related streamer on Twitch. Uh, he does really like budget friendly builds, and they also sound pretty nice, and they are pretty good. And like you know, it basically has to show that your build doesn't have to cost a lot to be nice. Like you can achieve the same amount of satisfaction and like enjoyment out of your keyboard from using cheaper parts but you, all you have to do is just delve into the DIY process just to the extent where you can like customize it to your own liking that's really all that's required but yeah is that client from AU? I don't think so or uh no, I don't think that's what you're referring to, though. Have you seen that video of the on Reddit of the guy with 1.5 kilogram springs? Uh, I think I saw it one time. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just it's like a meme. Mechanical keyboard's a soul. Yeah, you could say that. 300 gram springs for the Arnold Schwarzenegger of typists. I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger would still prefer to type on something light. <laughs> or like relatively light still. Like maybe like 80 grams. Keyboard Maker SK61 is my first 60% keyboard. I think my first 60% was a 
poker too? Poker is endgame. If I had started with a Leopold, I may have never went further with the hobby. So that's a funny thing you say, Jeff Leopard. Um, I started with Topre. I actually started with my first love in keyboards was Topre. I actually like fell in love with Topre the first meetup I went to, and I bought a, I bought an HHKB and a Nova Touch literally the day I returned from the meetup I went to the first time. And I thought I would never look back or forward again. Like I would just keep it at that. But yeah, that was a slippery slope for me. Delved into MX later on as well, but I mean I still love Topper though. No, no matter what, it, it still is like my favorite tactile switch in that sense. It, and technically, it is like a membrane, you know. So, a grain of salt. When is N dash? Oh, um, soon TM. Whenever that happens, soon TM. I don't know when exactly though. Whenever it gets to me, it hasn't arrived to me yet. So, wait, no, that's one off. Um, I think I missed. David David Chorvath's question. I never even type of a mechanical keyboard. What's a beginner switches and brand you would recommend? I highly recommend Leopold for sure. KBD fans has really really good affordable kits. I think is you want to delve into custom keyboards. Um, but I mean OEM stuff. There's a lot of good stuff out there like Ducky and Philco's and um, and uh, like Leopold's. I think I personally Leopold is. I'm a huge fan of Leopold boards. They just do really good stuff. So yeah. Do you do full-size keyboards too or just these without a numpad? Um, practically speaking, uh, David, I don't do full-size any, like, I mean, I, I don't do it mainly because my limited amount of desk space, um, but I have used like a TKL and a numpad on the side. Like I'll bring in a separate numpad and just plug it in whenever I need to use it for like data entry and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, like I like like a compact 1800 for instance, which is basically a full-size board. Um, so yeah, occasionally I'll appreciate them a lot, but I think my preferred layouts still are like 60%, which is like just the, this like main cluster. And then uh, TKLs, which have the function row and the navigation on the side. I built a keyboard with MX Browns, which is, MX Browns are great, in my opinion. She said that her favorite out of everything I built, hey, I mean, MX Browns are great. Why, why, why are you trying to say that MX Browns are bad, 10 Peaches? MX Browns are fantastic. Start with an HKB JP BT local for 170. Yo, that's a, that's a good deal for, for a BT board, for a Bluetooth board. All right, got to make sure these guys are going to be straight when I solder. So remind myself to do that. Yeah, these, these mods are going to be a bit iffy. Um, anyway. People are making good suggestions. Like if you're starting off, you could try hot swap, but you could. I think you. Could, I think I personally just delve right into soldering, learning how to solder, and doing it properly. Uh, so, I mean, that's up to you, though. It's up to you. Um, do you see pics of the finish? Oof. Yes, I did. Uh, Mister. Um, question. I. I did. I did. I did queue. Um, I did. I did. Uh, look at the pictures. I didn't say much, but I definitely appreciated them. I, I did like the pictures a lot. I can't wait to see it in person. That's what I'm waiting for. I want to see it in person. Alrighty, it's good. Uh, time to start soldering now. I suppose it's no secret by now, but in case people have missed it, I may be building an N-Dash, which is a board by Finderworks, at some point soon. 
a board that was restricted to a private buy in Australia or in the Australian region rather. Are these no, so these are just holy pandas with halo clears instead of halo trues. Uh Geister. I'm studying electrical engineering, so I guess soldering isn't a problem. Hey, that's nice. A fellow EE? -E? I'm an EE. -E. I'm an EE. -E. Well, I was an EE for undergrad. And mixed browns have their own category of tactile. Yeah. Going to go to the next meetup with a board full of slow full or of slow springs and have one key with two kilogram springs that have fun to anyone that types on it. Kimchi Jody boy, I think you had a stroke typing that. Um That was hard to read. So jealous, it's not mine. <laughs> and dash wise. Uh, but I will be building it. Sorry, I'm just catching up. Will you join the Heavy Grail when it comes into group buy? I don't know yet. Uh, I like my plastic cases, <laughs> so... And Heavy Grail looks kind of expensive. So, I'm not sure. If I have money, maybe? I'd love to, I'd love to support uh, Ryan Norbauer. I think he does great work, and I think his case will look fantastic. But... They come at no small price. So, we'll have to think about it, depending on that. Yeah. Uh, biggest issue is finding keycaps that I like but aren't sold out already. Allo, so in my opinion, I think for keycaps that you like, you should just um, you should just wait for the group buy that you want to participate in. Or if not, save money. Like actually save money. If you want specific caps that you cannot afford like in the aftermarket right now, actually just save. Like it's not a bad idea to spend a lot, like or not a lot, but like significantly more on something you really want than spending on a bunch of things in the meantime that you won't want like to keep uh it's just easier to do that it, you actually could save rather quickly if you ab can abstain yourself from spending um every dollar not spent is every dollar saved so yeah at least that's my kind of like my approach to a lot of it it's like if i don't think i'm gonna keep it i don't spend on it um even if it's like oh yeah i could get my money back though I, I, I don't do that. I try not to. I, I pretty much try to spend on stuff that I want to keep. Or I want to, like, I see myself keeping for a, at least a while. Yeah. Gap browns are legit. Don't care what anyone says. Saw it two key cons ago. To be fair, I've been drive, daily driving my MX Brown Discipline. Surprised how many people compliment the build. MX Browns are awesome. MX Browns are just great. Don't, don't criticize MX Browns. Am I also getting a hyphen? No comment. Got a question that maybe the stupidest one you ever got, but do you do, do chiclet mech keyboards exist or is something like that even possible? Sort of, but no, as someone said. Uh, low profile switches are basically similar to what chiclet keyboards are like. They're basically a super low profile like chiclets, but uh, they are mechanical inside. What are some tactiles that are least as good as holy pandas but always available for purchase? T1 tactile switches are very much available on primekb.com. Uh, so, actually, I have an affiliate link for PrimeKB.com, so you can head over to PrimeKB.com slash Lightning, and you can find T1 tactiles there, and also support the stream if you would like to. Um, where aftermarket keycaps usually sold? Just eBay? No, you would uh, try to go to r slash market on Reddit, or there's like other places. Yeah, eBay sometimes, rarely, uh, but rarely, really rarely. Um, but yeah, don't give in to FOMO, friends. Yes, Blue Wings plus Ear Plus, what? Impossible to save. It is impossible to save. You have no self-control. What if I really want to keep it but don't want to spend money on it? Then you don't spend the money on it. Then you have to move on from it. You have to do some mental gymnastics and just move on from it. Find a new hobby? Yo, that's kind of toxic. <laughs> you could buy those grab bags. Oh my goodness. Anyway. No meme that was the smoothest self-promo I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I don't think I could even tell that was a self-promo, but I appreciate it. I'll take it as a compliment. Alright. Time to solder, friends. Uh, excuse me, I'm gonna actually uh, raise the mic because it might be too loud. Or actually just make it closer to me. Like that. 
Uh, let me move this a little bit this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna turn on the fan, so excuse me if it's too loud. If you think it's too loud and I should reduce the volume, I can, so just let me know, okay? Thanks. About to hit up PKB and buy some pack house now, BRB? Hell yeah, boy. Let's go, Ginty Jody boy. Alrighty. So time for soldering. So for those who are new, I think there are some people who are new to the stream. Um, so just in general for soldering, I normally solder the corners first. Uh, make sure that they're fully um, flush on the PCB. And then just solder the corners because uh, if you hold on to the corners, they act as nice anchors. Um, and so I personally prefer to uh, have the corners soldered in first. So I do you know, each corner one at a time. One thing about KBD fans PCBs is that they kind of... The solder doesn't flow as well sometimes, but... If, if you have flux, it's fine. FOMO friends, oh my goodness. Y'all encouraging each other to, to FOMO? To FOMO purchase things? I mean, that's alright. Just, just make sure to use my affiliate links, okay? <laughs> Shame, shameless plug. JK, JK. You're free to delete all referrals. <laughs> What's that sound? Oh, okay, it's just this thing. <laughs> what is FOMO? FOMO means fear of missing out. And then, so after I do all the four corners, I normally try to do some stuff in the middle. So basically that holds the middle part. Like it basically, you're just trying to create a few anchor points. Uh, between like the like the entire like the, across the board like quite literally across the board uh, You're just trying to make some anchor points so things don't bend or like twist in weird ways um, So I just try to do a few switches towards the middle like, You know maybe on the side here Just always make sure that you are like I press on the PCB kind of hard enough so that I'm ensuring that the switch is actually all the way in and flush against the PCB when by the time I'm forming this solder joint. Uh, so that's something I do. And then you know you can just flip it over and just take a look at like if things are straight or not or things are flush. So you guys can see here that all my switches are nice and flush here, right? So that's a good thing. And um, if you look at it from the side here, maybe you can sometimes you can see like things stick out a little bit, but uh, it's kind of hard. You have to like inspect it very closely. But overall, you know, just always check your four corners and uh, everything's nice and flush. I think that's kind of like what separates uh, good builders from um, from the rest. Uh, I think like good builds tend to tend to have like things nice and consistent throughout the whole board. And so that's something I would advise for you to look out on. Look out for. Um, anyway. Seriously, I have FOMO all the time. I think I'm just gonna pass my initial phase of FOMO in this hobby. After 15 group buys, I became more selective of what I buy. That sounds like everyone else. Everyone kind of has that phase, I think. Alright, so... Shall we get to sponsor time? Just because y'all are talking about FOMO and I should probably encourage you to buy. So let's get on to that. Let's let's do that. Hey, yes, real Q, hello. And then once you do the corners, you can do all the rest of the switches. I just go by row. But yeah, let's talk about FOMO stuff. So let's talk about group buys, shall we? So first and new on the sponsor list. So if you type on exclamation sponsors, you can find all of the sponsors as well as a list of links to their websites um, so, so just FYI all of the websites have access to like their Instagram or discord or like different social media and as well as their email newsletter that you can always access so just type in exclamation sponsors to get a list for those but anyhow uh, the first and new on this sponsor list is actually Canon keys as I mentioned earlier 
Uh, Canon Keys uh, is located in the east coast of the United States and they are a vendor. They run group buys uh, for key sets as well as keyboards such as the Brutal and Savage and Rec series, um, the Adelie, the Adelie? That, that's coming soon, um, and a bunch of other, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but right now, um, on Group Buy, uh, you'll be able to find GMK Bread, which is a like brown themed key set. So, which is which is modeled right after, you know, what it's called, like bread. It has some cute novelties. Uh, it had some alternate alphas, but that just got canceled due to low um, low purchase rates. Um, but GMK Bread is currently on Group Buy. I highly suggest people who have been wanting like a natural kind of colored key set to to consider gmk bread highly i actually really like the set and i will probably purchase it myself um it also has there's also a um desk mat um for gmk bread that you can purchase on canon keys as well you will be able to find sa mizu so if you uh, missed out on gmk mizu and you still want something that's themed after water bending and specifically like just water themed things. SA Mizu pretty much offers all of that but this time in SA Profile. Uh, so it'll be produced by Signature Plastics so do expect slightly longer lead times. Uh, SA Mizu also comes with there is a um, desk mat being offered for it. Um, and there's a bunch of kits, obviously, to fill out your layout. So do check out SA Mizu by Rensuya. Cat Miz Mizu at the end of the year too. Hmm, I see. So many Mizu variants. Pretty much every profile will have a Mizu variant, huh? Okay. Cool. Yes, SA SA Mizu. Yes, SA Mizu is on Canon Keys. Uh, okay, so on Canon Keys, there's also the Winter Hour desk mats. Uh, so Winter Hour desk mats are a uh, winter-themed desk mat uh, designed by Minterly, a fellow um, content creator and Twitch streamer. Uh, she's also designed SA Bliss, as well as a few other things. Uh, the Alpaca switches were also run by her. And so Winter Hour, the Winter Hour desk mat is uh, like a blue icy themed desk mat uh, that she designed. So that's on Group Byte right now until the end of the month. Canakees also has some other desk mats after their logo, um, has some patterns on it. Uh, so check those out as well. All right, so moving on to the next um, DSA, Infinity. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the next uh, sponsor, we have Dixie Mech. So head on over to DixieMech.com slash lightning to check out Dixie Mech's shop. They recently announced the Bauer 2. So if you haven't seen the news on the Bauer 65% uh, keyboard, uh, second round has been announced. So if you want to see all the details on that, go to DixieMech.com slash lightning. The group buy will be happening fairly soon. So if you don't want to miss out, check out those details now and put it down on your calendar so you don't miss out. Uh, but if you want any pings, uh, my Discord also offers pings for all of the sponsors that we have. Um, so you can go over to my Discord and sign up for the role. Uh, there's instructions on the, the welcome page. On Dixie, on Dixie Mech, uh, we have a few group buys running right now. So first of all, we have uh, GMK Nuke Data or Nuclear Data. Um, it's a green theme set. Uh, has some nuclear, uh, like nuclear plant related novelties. It's being run by Dixie, Heinebush, Bip, and a few other people who were involved in the design of this key set. Um, there's also a Rama cap and a desk mat being offered for it. So if you're into green, like monochrome green sets, uh, new data might be for you. Yo, hello Derpy, what's up? How you doing, man? It's good to see you. It's been a while. Did Impono go up on DC yesterday? Yes, so so um 
Dixie Mac also has GMK Pono, which is what I was talking about earlier. So uh, GMK Pono was designed by Sour. Uh, Sour is the designer who also uh, made my logo as well as other people's logos. And he's done a lot of cool work in the community. Um, so do check out Sour's work. Uh, but uh, GMK Pono is a cute cat themed set. Uh, it will be done in GMK stock colors, uh, namely uh, the N9 dark gray color and the 3C like pinkish color. Um, it also comes with it, uh, it also uh, comes with a bunch of desk masks that are being offered for the group buy as well as some Rama caps. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go check out GMK Pono. Should be running until the middle of next month. Mm -hmm. Okay, how have I been? I've been well, man. I mean, I've just been busy, actually. Uh, like, keyboard, sort of somewhat busy, but uh, I'm mostly just busy with personal life stuff. Um, hella derpy. So I've been doing well. Um, just trying to keep up, you know, trying to keep a routine up. Anyhow, so let's, let's move on to the next sponsor. It's Mint Autumn. So Mint Autumn, uh, currently, they're only... Um, working on the production of the Rukia Round 2 group buy. Uh, it's already in production, so the group buy has already been run and passed. Um, so they're in the, currently in the manufacturing process. Uh, the Rukia is a polycarbonate Alice style layout um, keyboard. Um, it will come with this cool gondolindrum design PCB with uh, ability to put rotary encoders on it. A lot of cool stuff, uh, but it's already run unfortunately. Uh, but Mint Autumn also will be having uh, future projects related to making cases out of the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plastic. So if you've seen those like inverse stems made out of them, uh, Jack Static of Mint Autumn is actually working on developing cases out of that material. So if you want to look into that stuff, um, if you're excited about that, you know, go and check out um, mintautumn.com. There, uh, there should be a link to their Discord as well, where you can share that some of that excitement and talk about it. So do check out mintautumn.com. All right, rotary encoders, yeah. <laughs> Pono is pure aesthetic. Yeah, Pono is really nice. I, I actually really like it. Um, next up, we have uh, Novel Keys. So Novel Keys just recently restocked their H1 switches. Their um, a bunch of Gadron switches, so if you're looking to like Gadron yellows, Gadron reds, Gadron blacks, or whatever it is, uh, with like milky tops or regular tops, um, Novel Keys just restocked on them. Um, they also have the newly created Silk and Dry series switches, uh, manufactured by JWK, which is the same manufacturer as the Alpacas and the H1s. So if you're looking for some smooth linear switches, do check out the Silk and Dry switches from Novel Keys. Um, you can actually get 5% off uh, any order using uh, with in-stock items using the promo code THUNDER. So when you're checking out, uh, make sure to try the promo code THUNDER and you'll get 5% off any in-stock items. So like if you're buying stabilizers or switches or desk mats, whatever it might be. Uh, but it does not apply to any group buy items in your cart, so just note that. How do the silk switches compare to the alpacas? So they're pretty much about the same, uh, but however, the silk switches are lubed with 205 grade zero. Um, so as a stock switch, they come pretty, they come in pretty smooth and pretty nice. Um, so if you're like really lazy, they might be for you, uh, like in terms of like lazy to lube and stuff. But I think most, most enthusiasts might actually opt for lubing them. Uh, although I think as a stock experience, they're probably the best stock linear switch that we have at the moment being offered. Uh, at least just that's just my opinion on it just based on like what I experienced from reviewing it and as as for all reviews I offer my most honest opinion on things anyhow so that's novel keys novel keys is actually running GMK hammerhead until the end of the month as well as GMK mecha 01 so hammerhead is an ocean themed key set and mecha 01 is themed after the fa the fan favorite Evangelion series um, so if you're into big mecha robots uh, that are purple and green and orange and all that good stuff, do check out GMK Mecha 01. Is this where I can trade my good boy points for tendies? Man, I wish I could have some tendies. Carlbit, please, I want some I want some tendies. I, I haven't had chicken tenders in so long. I'm so jealous too, you know, of whomever has had chicken tenders recently. 
I haven't had chicken wings either recently. I, I want some Popeyes now. Anyway, so let's continue on to the sponsor list. Um, next is uh, Prime, key Prime Keyboard. So head on over to primekb.com slash lightning. Uh, they recently already had a sale of alpaca switches, but you will also be able to find T1 tactile switches, which are very similar to Zelio V2s and Holy Pandas and similar variants. Uh, they also have Duroc springs, they also have uh, cherry stabilizers and the like. Uh, they do expect to have like Duroc stabilizers restocked soon, hopefully in the next month. Uh, they, there is no specific ETA. Um, if you are looking for other um, switch accessories, uh, Prime KV also has um, desk keys uh, switch films, which are similar to the TX switch films that people use for their switches. Um, and there is also, um, for Topra, there are Topra silencing rings by desk keys as well being offered on Prime KV. There's also a few uh, DSA and DSS uh, key sets. Um, so there's like Honeywell and a few other things on, on, um, on Prime KB. Isn't Drug the company behind Telios or am I getting that twisted? They are, but now they've pretty much started their own kind of like sort of legit switch business. So if you haven't been around, that's basically what they've been up to. They've been making a, a bajillion switches and stabs and stuff. People that st stuff that people use and stuff that uh, yeah will always have some form of demand. I feel. Um. Anyhow, so that's what Prime KB has right now. So head on over to primekb.com/lightning for any goodies over there. And then lastly, we have Project Keyboard. So head on over to projectkeyboard.com. There's a there's an affiliate link in my Twitch command as well as on my Discord channel. Um, but you can head over to Project Keyboard to purchase... Uh, I think they already ran out of like Alice PCBs and the like, but sometimes they'll run group buys for PCBs as well as plates uh, for like Alice and among other things. Uh, I believe they are currently offering the Elongate Mini 1800 layout uh, custom keyboard by um, Fkari slash Mr. Keeps. Uh, if you've checked out Mr. Keeps content, he's uh, an active YouTube content creator as well as uh, he also Twitch, uh, he also streams on Twitch. Um, so the Elongate is uh, designed by him. I believe it uses a, a gasket mounted um, it's a gasket mounted keyboard in the in like the small form factor uh, that like assimilates the 1800 layout. So if you want it, like a small form factor keyboard with like a numpad, uh, the Elongate might be just for you. It should be running until the end of the month. It comes in black, plum, rose gold, um, what else? Blue? No. Yeah, blue and I think polycard. I think it comes in all those colors. And yeah, you can all obviously buy extra parts for it as well. Um, and then on Project Keyboard, we also have GMK Sumi that just went up for a group buy. So it'll be up for a group buy until the middle of next month. Um, and GMK Sumi is uh, like a minimalist monochrome sort of key set. Has some cool novelties uh, modeled after, inspired by aspects of Japanese calligraphy. And there's some cool desk mats. There's like four desk mat designs as well as two different Rama cap designs that you can check out if you're into like monochrome stuff. Um, so do check out GMK Sumi. All kits will be produced for GMK Sumi, so you don't have to be uh, worried that something might not be produced. So head on over to Project Keyboard for that. Oh, uh, speaking of Project Keyboard, um, coming very very soon is actually going to be my set called GMK Dolch R5. It's a rerun of the infamous Dolch colorway, uh, but it will feature a row five bottom row as well as a completely new accent color which is a custom turquoise color uh, that's going to resemble the turquoise on the original Dolch Pack logo. So if you're excited about Dolch, uh, Dolch R5 will be running soon on Project Keyboard as well as other vendors um, internationally. So like Daily Clack, Oblotsky Industries, Desk Hero in Canada, um, as well as Z Frontier and Monoke. Uh, they will all be um, having GMK Dolch R5 
Um, alongside GMK Dolch R5, um, OG Space Keys uh, will also be running through Heinebush and the same vendors for other international vendors. So that will happen. Oh, not infamous, sorry. Renowned. Um, famous. Um, oh, actually, infamous too. Because Ivan was somehow involved in it, so. Yeah. I mean, Ivan actually successfully ran those kits, but. Ivan doesn't have the best reputation either. So, Ivan Ivanovich, popular keyboard group by runner in the past, who also was Geek Hack administrator and then ran off with a lot of money. Anyway, that, that history lesson I'll leave to Pudsy to tell. Um, he can tell you more about it. He's, he's all about that kind of stuff. <laughs> popular, sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for the support, Mr. Kimchi Jody Boy. I know you would like me to talk about how good Analog Dreams is, right? Yeah, GMK uh, Dolch R5 will be running in August most likely. I am still pending on the price on, on the quote from GMK, but it basic we're basically on the deciding phase now. Uh, so we will have the pricing out up very soon. I actually have a new sur I actually have a surprise for GMK Dolch R5. So there will be some cool things coming up for it. Um, and for those who have not been like well aware, like I also have um, Arzen collabs for them. So like Art Key and Hungerwork Studio and a bunch of other artisans will be making um, artisan keycaps uh, inspired by the colorway. So I'll announce more details about that as they release more details specifically. You got Art Key and Binge too? Yes I did. Okay, I'm done soldering, but I need to just make sure the alignment is correct, so I'll actually work on that first before closing this. Anyway, um, let me see what I'm missing. Let's see if I missed anything during the chat of about sponsors. Bachelor wants to just don't key. What on the switch is lubed, like the spring or the legs? Uh, the spring is lubed on the silks, uh, as well as the front part of the stem. And then, Prelbit came in. And then, um, can't wait for lightning torch. Thank you, thank you. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I love Honey Man Push. <laughs> What's the date on the Pro 1? Uh, the date of my Pro 1 is 2005, May. May of 2005. That's how old my Pro 1 is. Okay, this, uh, this, uh, this pipe key is not looking too straight, so I'm gonna straighten that a little bit. I'll just use this to check this straight yeah. alignment for this guy here. Uh, looks like the shift key is fine, but yeah, not the pipe key. I'll, I'll double check. About your HKB around, when do you start notice the case yellowing? This case came in yellow just like that. I, I got it like that from Japan. 
uh, I, I got it on purpose because it was yellowed already. So it's been yellowed for a while. <laughs> if, that, if that's what if that's what you're trying to ask me. That's hella big brain checking the 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 the, the, the alignment of the switches. Yeah, I mean that's like a very common thing that uh, I think everyone should do, especially for any plate mount switches. You should definitely be checking your alignment for for your switches. You know what? I'm gonna desolder this guy here because um, I think once you like solder stuff and it just doesn't look right, sometimes you just have to desolder it and redo it because the plate is like getting in the way. Let's apply some solder though. I just realized that clack you have on the HKB. <laughs> you just realized? It's been there the whole time. My personal theory is that it'll either take 10 years or not at all. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I actually don't know what the theory on yellowing plastic is. But I do know that all plastic eventually does yellow, so so yeah. Oh, thank you for explaining um, R five, uh, Jeff. Appreciate that. having universal plates can be a pain in the butt because of the alignment situation That one gets. Uh, let's just make sure that the backspace is fine too, because the cutout is a little bigger there. Oh, the backspace looks fine to me. It's just this, that. Okay. Yeah. Alright, cool. I think I can now. I think I can solder the pipe key now. Yo, so this kind of out of the blue, do y'all have advice for fixing a stripped thread on a case? Oof. Um, if it's stripped, you'll have to retap it or just be very careful about it. Um, you definitely don't want to put in a screw in there and then leave it because that's that could just possibly just stay in there. Um, so yeah. Um. Lastly, just check the alignment of this guy here. Okay, looks okay. Maybe just a little touch on this guy. All right, that should be enough. All right. You guys can verify for me the alignment. Just, uh, hold up. Uh, 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 uh. Does that look straight to you? I mean, the backspace always has a little bit of wiggle because of the stab, but basically that's basically, that's basically what, what it does. Looks good. Cool. Looks straight as a pipe. <laughs> Smarty pants. Smart. Thank you for checking for me. It's nice to have a second set of eyes help out. Um, the 
full thread is toast? Oh no. Um, yeah, I unfortunately am not like a machinist or anyone like very, uh, not super. I guess I'm not well vested in the knowledge of how machines work, specifically how like threading and that kind of stuff is. So can't give you too much advice there, unfortunately. We done with this. Okay, so case assembly time. So, um, actually, I'm wondering if I need to place this guy first. I think I do, so, yeah. So, I should peel uh, this acrylic first. The question is, can I peel this in one go? Will I peel this in one go? Probably will, yeah. And uh, watch me tear it somewhere. I've never used the RGB and might make it a meme build. <sighs> it's okay. I still got it. I still got it. Should remind Heine if he tears at all. I'm unfollowing. <laughs> Yo, high standards here. There we go. Done. One side. Uh, the other side. What do y'all think of the recent Rama boards? By the way, those things are looking tempting as hell. They look pretty nice, in my opinion. Like the U80s, they look super nice. I haven't heard bad things about them yet, at all. Um, yeah, shipping times can be long for Rana boards because the group buys tend to be unlimited. So that will lead to long, long lead times. But other than that, um, I haven't heard bad things though. Like construction-wise, anodizing, PCBs. Um, QC issues. I was tossing an acrylic diffuser because one of the screw holes wasn't cut correctly, so it didn't sit flush. Huh, I see. I like the Kara. Yeah, Kara looks pretty exciting, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to to that, uh, to like hearing more about it. Diffuser. 
then the next part would be our screws for the plates and the PCB. So you just uh, line it up on top, and then I just need to find the. I think these are the there are the gold screws over here. Yep, um, these are Phillips screws. So, oh, that's this one. This one should do. Right, these are magnetic indeed. Okay, so I first start with the middle pin. Um, just make sure that everything is lined up. And then when, if something is not lined up properly, then you can just uh, turn it around a little bit. But yeah, looks like it is. And do the corners. This is a KBD-75. The kits have gotten way better since I last checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the V2 is significantly better. The anodizing is really nice and the kits overall are still just as cheap. Uh, now the, the, the PCBs have QMK and VIA on them, so pretty nice. Pretty good stuff in my opinion. Oh! Oh, 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 should I put that foam, actually? Hold up. I should put this foam piece on. Let's put this foam piece, shall we? Yeah? Foam, yay or nay? Let's do it, let's do it. It's already here, so let's do it. So this foam should go here. Oh, look at that. Wait, uh, no, 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 wait, what? Is this right? Doesn't the foam piece just go straight in? I am so confused by this. Let's see how this lines up in the first place, because is this foam for a different board? Is this what it is? Because it's done. okay, it seems to be cut out like right for that, but uh, it seems to also be covering some holes here. So it's not. Wait, this this looks like it's lined up for like a sixty percent. So I'm actually gonna check which pers which foam they got. Foam KBD seventy five. Let's see what we find. KBD seventy five. Case foam. Um, I like open that link on my browser. Give me one second, guys. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Customer, please. Oh, it's okay. It's no big deal. So that's what it apparently looks like. Um, I'm looking at it right in front of me and. While they do look similar, I also feel like this is not the right piece of foam. foam. Um, KB75 foam, KB67. Aha! That's what it is. Alright, so this foam is for the KBD67 V2, uh, which is, well, incorrect. So, you guys see that KBD67 foam right there? This one? So let me show you. This ha this one, like if you look at it from the top, it has these two square pieces here. Like the, like the square piece right in the middle. Square piece right in the middle. So that's a KBD67 foam. But actually, you know what? I'm gonna make it work. Cause screw it. We're gonna make it work, guys. We're gonna make it work. So we just need to cut out like, or I can stretch it a little. <laughs> no, this, this is not gonna work. <laughs> I mean, I could I could cut it out. Um, the 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 client is around, so I'm, I'm gonna ask him. Hey, you. The wrong phone. Stabby stabby holes. That might happen today. 
I'm actually not too bad at this stuff. Uh, all I need is a pair of scissors. Yeah, I would just actually... All I would do is... Cut... One, two... One, two, three... Oh, wait. One, two, three... Four, which is easy. And five little pieces. Exacto knife? I'll just use uh, scissors. I'm just gonna use scissors. Uh, I'm just gonna wing it, so... Don't... Don't yell at me. I'm actually just gonna cut square rectangle here. So I'm actually gonna mark these. Uh, I, I should have a sharpie here, so I'm just gonna use a sharpie for this. Um, so... Like... Like maybe like up till there, and then maybe up till there, and then for this one, I'm just gonna cut from this hole here. So all I need to do is go down by like because all the all the these things just need to do is pass by. So it's really not not a difficult task here. Right, so I'm just gonna cut directly down, and then I just need to know up to where, so maybe up to here. And then, so one, two, three, there's two more. So I'll just cut directly here. Okay. Yeah, and then five should be down here, so just cut. Alright. Something like that. Do all the LEDs align? Good question. Let's see that. Let's check. Uh, the top ones do. The bottom ones don't matter. The bottom ones actually don't matter because they are um, they are um, not covered. Uh, so they are not covered. The bottom, the top ones are fine. The bottoms are not covered. Uh, come on. Uh, I see the. I see that the focus is on the on the mic right now so you guys probably can't see okay there we go so you guys can see the bottom LEDs don't really matter so much here um, I might just make a cutout here actually for the um, for the reset button although you although because this is via you uh, the user won't need it but hey just in case right okay so we're doing some handy work here. Oh, I also need to check for the screw holes. That's right. There is more. There is a lot more work than I thought there would be. Oh wait, we already accounted for the screw holes. So that's perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, they bought the wrong foam? Yeah, they did. But it's okay. It's no big deal. It's just foam, honestly. Like this is, like if, if, I, were, if I were ordering, I would actually skip on ordering the foam because it's like 10 additional dollars. And for ten dollars, I can just get like shelf liner from like Walmart or whatever, and that's more than enough to just put you know put pieces of foam in there, or like put pieces of something that like you know will dampen some of that. So it's no big deal. That's at least in my opinion. So yeah, we'll just cut this out um, accordingly, and it won't be. It won't be a problem. Okay. This is like arts and crafts, you know. I mean, this is why I we are in the making make, make uh, makers and crafting category on Twitch. We are indeed DIYing stuff here. That's the whole point of this. It's the whole. It's all of the fun. Actually, I, I actually enjoy this stuff, so. Feels like pre cut only worth on. It is pre cut. I mean, yeah, it is pre cut. <laughs> Yo! Sal and CNC, what's up, Berber Gang? What's up? Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Um, what, what were you up to, Mr. Salvin? What were you machining today? Tell us more about your stuff today. Birdman doing bird things? What bird things were you doing? What were you burring? 
ha 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 you get it burrs you don't want to burr things because you know they will look bad you want to make machine do burr but not burr salvin gang what's up hello hello the trident oh i see diego please <laughs> sorry So for those who are unsure of what I'm doing, I'm building a KVD-75, but I am mostly, um, I'm actually cutting some parts of the foam here because it was uh, not the right piece of foam, but turns out it's okay. Because I can just cut it out. That's a yellow HKB. Yes, this is a yellow HKB indeed. Uh, where's the foam from? The foam is from KBD Fans, though. Um, KBD Fans makes foam pieces for their boards nowadays, apparently. How are y'all? What's up, Yeffy, my man? Hello, hello. Neurotical, hello. Any Sophia avail? I wish I could see a Sophia in real life. Salvin, you should send me a Sophia if you're working on that one. <laughs> Free keyboard, please. Wait, they sell the phone, but you still have to cut it? No, 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 no. So, let me explain. Um, the KBD-75 like there are foam pieces for every single board in their lineup but the client in this case accidentally uh, sent me the the piece of foam that was for the kbd67 and so obviously it didn't match but i've made some cuts oh i forgot about this last one here um but they've made uh, you know I, i'm just uh, cutting this out because i want it to fit because instead of giving up and not cutting it out we can always just cut it out Corsa sides, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm just trying to make the right cutout so it fits and it, it works. So yeah, we're at the last part of the build really. I uh, just need to cut this out, put it in, assemble everything together, and we can type on it. Do you have any recs for upcoming 65 to 70 percent boards that come in rose gold? By the way, we're asking for a friend. Does the zenith come in oro? You might want to check the zenith uh, by Rama Foundry. That one is basically a 70 percent uh, because um, it has it's a 65 percent with two columns on the left side for macros. AKA resin cluster, AKA my favorite kind of cluster for my favorite mini miniature figurines. So now, now as you can see, everything is there. We have our screw holes, LEDs are showing kind of, um, I could cut a little bit of the bottom actually. Um, I could do that now. Yeah, let's, let's just cut, let's just cut slightly in the bottom. Actually, no. This is fine. LEDs will be okay. Yeah, this this will be fine. It's okay. All right. So we just place that. Um, this is like also via controlled, so no need to pr press a reset button anymore, which is nice. All right. So we place the foam piece. We place our acrylic diffuser on there, and then we place our keyboard assembly. Uh, looking for something for more pink? Um, I don't know then. Um, I don't know what's currently running that has uh, pink other than that. Looking for a starter board. Oh, I see. Hmm. 
I don't know, maybe someone in chat could recommend something. I, I'm not very much attuned to 65% boards as much lately, just because I have lost more interest in 65%. Um, yeah, I, 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 I am a 60% and TKL kind of guy. So that's what I pay attention to. Give up. <laughs> Moss gang. Hey, moss, moss is indeed, I think, the better color in the Zenith lineup currently. So, pretty excited about that. Uh, Archetype keycaps, hello. How are you doing? Howdy, howdy. Is GMK and EPBT the same profile? Yes, they are cherry profile. So yes, basically the same profile. Uh, wait, am I missing any screws? Over here. CP1800 and TK with numpad are what I prefer. Let me see. Okay. Um, I think this is good enough. Um, as long as it doesn't come off, uh, I think that's okay. Um, and yeah, we'll just put the case on top now. Alright. Do you know of any high-end 60s or TKLs running? Well, running as in... Uh, that are going to be on group by soon. I mean, the ogre just went on, and the Heine TKL just went on. Um, but if you're looking for other things, I mean, um, let me think. What else? What is there, guys? Weaven R3 is going to run soon. Weaven R3 is going to come soon. Uh, Weaven R3. I mean, I think it's pretty nice personally, but I'm not sure if people are like, oh, is that high end? It's not like so high end because it looks. It looks like weird, but I mean, I personally like my weaving a lot, and I really, um, I really like how it sounds and how it looks. So, not for everybody though, but it sounds amazing for sure. It sounds very unique because of the carbon fiber body. Um, Heine TKL already ran. Um, it's already in group buy phase. It's like I mean, it's already in production phase. I know one, but I'm keeping a secret. Hmm, really. I'm, I'm not sure what that might be um but yeah um i mean i can check like interest checks right now but like i honestly don't pay enough attention these days so like zenith is a 65 percent elongate is a mini 1800 um raindrop it's like looks like it's gonna run soon or it's running already uh on interest check though i haven't been paying as much attention as I think um, others are. What are my favorite switches? Um, is it just insanely more expensive to get TKL? No, no, no. TKLs are about the same price as everything else. It's more so that TKLs are widely used, so they're popular. Um, like, you know, people like to use TKLs. So therefore, um, the demand for TKLs is higher. That's all. Did I put in the screw? Yeah, okay, cool. Alright, we already put our screws in and some extra screws. Um, but my favorite switches, um, I of course, uh, so it depends. Uh, for tactiles, I like alt switches, alp switches, like orange alps, like um, blue alps. I mean, I guess blue alps are clickies. Um, I like um, Topre a lot for his tactiles. I like um, MX browns and ergo clears, so like lighter MX clears. I like them a lot. I like mod M's. Uh, I like poly pandas on on occasion, um, but yeah, that goes for tactiles mostly. Clickies, I would say buckling spring, beam spring, and maybe like uh, box navies, box jades, and then uh, like blue alps. And then for linears, I like vintage MX black switches or like any smooth MX like red, black, whatever linear switch. Uh, I like the, all of the recent JWK stuff, so like H1s, Alpacas, um, I like Gadron Inks, um, yeah, uh, pretty much anything that's like smooth and nice and usable, like that's good enough for me. I'm not super picky. Not as much. I would more so be 
nitpicky about how smooth they are when like when they come in and that kind of stuff but overall i think a lot of the offerings nowadays are pretty comparable oh and the recent like silk and dry switches are awesome too Um, is the weave in a, uh, take a standard 60% PCB? Uh, it depends. I think they're revising it to have a centered PCB, centered USB port, so that might not support uh, regular standard 60% PCBs anymore. The older rounds did have uh, left side USB, so that was okay. Um, but I'm not sure about nowadays. Alright. Let's use this cable here. All right, um, let's see. Make clears great again. Clears are awesome switches, in my opinion. Um, it's just not for, maybe it's just not for everybody. I mean, some people say that, but I mean, I don't. Let's, let's test this out first. Lights up, nice. Via. Uh, it looks like it detected it because I see a different device on there. So KVD75 Rev2. Key tester. Uh, test matrix. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Configure just the shape of this. So layouts. Um, clear is still not bad. I don't. I like clears a lot. Uh, I love. I love clears. MX clears with. Um, so I want the right mods to be 2.5. Spacebar is actually going to be 7U. So therefore, I should change my key map. I should change this to left Windows key. I change this to left Alt key, and this is okay. Yeah, ergo clears are just MX clears with a lighter spring. That's the only thing that's different about them. Yeah. Um, okay, I can leave the RGB for now. Actually, let's change this to uh, layer 2 or layer 1. And then RGB toggle is there. Uh, let's put RGB toggle on here instead. Uh, actually, hold up. Um... Let's put RGB toggle on F1. RGB toggle mode. Actually, mode plus, hue minus plus, saturation minus plus, brightness minus plus. And then I like leaving these to just empty those. Um, that's cool. Um, media keys. I like my media. I like media keys here just for fun. And then mute volume. All right, cool. Via is so handy. Um, wish they were smoother. Tactile switches are not supposed to be like super smooth anyway. Like the whole point of tactility is resistance. So in my opinion, it's not a terrible thing. Uh, I understand people's concerns over it, but I personally find them okay. Like I think if they're smooth enough. And then you just loop them. Should be more than enough to accommodate for use. So that's just my take on it. Oh, I forgot about the bump on. So now we can put our bump ons on. Maybe they're gonna retool clears one day. Maybe, maybe, maybe once the old ones really wear out, like the whatever they're currently using. Anything that's comparable to Ergo Clears, anything modern? Mod M's are pretty comparable, I would say. Mod M's are kind of similar to uh, like MX Clears. They have a bump, uh, they have a higher bump, uh, they're, but they're not like Holy Pandas. So I think uh, Mod M's could compare pretty well to Ergo Clears. 
or like Zelio V ones, of course. You can always put the stem in like a cherry housing if you want it. Thanks for the help. I'm glad that we could be of help. So the client actually sent a key set, um, which I imagine is a key set that they want to use on it. So we have, um, we actually have a GMK Pulse today. Uh, this is the first time I actually see this key set in real life because I didn't get GMK Pulse. So we'll be using GMK Pulse. That's what they wanted to see on it. So I'm gonna oblige. Um, okay, so seven new space bars right here. So we can tell. So let's get that. Rip no Arabic alphas. I actually like that they don't get the Arabic alphas because I don't like the Arabic alphas so much because they are uh, don't have the full legends. I, I actually would. They, they, like, the Arabic on Mito's Arabic set omitted a lot of the sub-legends that are supposed to be there. And so I, I don't like that. But, I mean, that's just my, my take on it. Mm, yeah. So every non-vint cherry black will qualify as retooled? No. 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 Nope. That's not true. Uh, retooled was sometime, like, in... I would say, like, three years ago-ish. Two, three years ago ish people started noticing that um the switches were were basically um smoother and so that would classify as retooled so yeah 2017 i would say because it was it was after i came into the hobby and that was 2016. why should i be why should i care about their language and the culture if i can make something bastardized it looks cool Oh, <laughs> talking about Arabic, yeah. Unfortunate, but yeah. Not gonna say too much about it. Managed to remove the ping from them. I loop the springs. Just tub loop the springs in oil, and I guess loop the switches. <laughs> the the brass plate sounds pretty good. He asked them nicely and went away. Yeah, I uh my switches really well very very uh very ooh. I built a KVD 75 and could never get it to sound nice in that board no matter how much foam I used that's surprising because the KVD 75s I built have sounded all pretty good in my opinion that's just me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, seems like we only have. I'll just put caps lock on there just because the legends.
Uh, age-old question, do you clip the stems or no? I did not cl uh, clip any of the stems this time around, just because I thought that they were just fine without clipping. I thought that the sound was okay, eh? and the travel didn't seem too badly affected or anything like that, so I was like, okay, you know what, I don't need to clip these. Um, some people decide to, some people don't, so... I personally don't, it's just bothersome, and I think it introduces uh, an extra variable that could be inconsistency uh, that could um you know cause inconsistency in the build so i choose not to ultimately i did miss which switches are being used in this build. These are uh, holy pandas made out of Inver pandas and Halo clear switches. Just good old holy pandas. There's no novelties or anything, so I'll just put an escape here. Um, uh, let's see. I need to just look at what we have here. Um, what is this page? Round. Uh, so I think it's gonna be home. Two, and then this is the row three. There we go. Cool. And that's a pretty board. I'm glad you think so. It's not my board. Is it hot swap? No, it's solderable. It is solderable. clips can be extra annoying. That's I'll figure it out later. I just need to make the hole bigger, I think. But yeah, okay. Alright. Let's see. Clean a little bit up. looks like ah uh, let's see have I missed anything mm. okay I don't think so oh wow 114 viewers that's more than I I'm used to seeing around here to those who came in from Salvin stream uh, thank you so much for sticking around um, let's get on to typing on this guy on. Alright, cool. And um, let's get this mic pointed towards the board. And 
And so, you didn't measure one Huey? I mean, you want me to measure one Huey? It's, it's, this is about one Huey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could get it a little bit closer actually. Maybe like this much, yeah, it's good enough. I mean, if you really want me to be very specific, then fine. Yeah, that's good enough, I think. Alrighty. Um, gotta stay scientific, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wait, Dingus, who is this? Is this Dingus? Dingus? Like, Dingus Hammer Dingus? Or is this someone else Dingus? Alright. The moment of truth? Yeah, typing, typing, typing time. Where did I put that typing test just now? Uh, monkey type, where are you? Oh, here you are, okay. That already sounds so good. Oh, oops, my bad. Okay, you guys can see that, right? So that's good, okay. Don't get nervous, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I do get a little nervous, but I'll, I'll be fine. All right, guys. So this is a uh, KVD seventy five B two by KVD fans, built with Holy Panda sixty seven gram springs. Very classic Holy Panda configuration. GMK pulse. There's a case foam on the inside that I put in. Has an acrylic diffuser and all that stuff. It's a brass plate, and the stabs are just cherry stabs. So let's go. All right. too great of a typing test but it sounds decent okay so here are the mods Sure sounds like holy pandas. <laughs> um, not much different from what I would have expected. What stats are these? Uh, these are uh, just cherry stabilizers. Let's try it. Let's try this typing again, shall we? All right. It's great we have a neighbor you dislike. Is it? Is it really that loud? Let's try this again.
storm is coming or a garbage can. Yeah, there is a storm, I think, that's coming outside. It is getting cloudy. I can hear a bit of thunder. Sounds good. That's good. That's good. Let's see. So if anyone has any questions, but uh, otherwise, let me show you the board itself. Okay, so this is what the board looks like. This is underglow, pretty nice and pretty nice and even actually. This is what it looks from the side. Been fun, thanks for the time. Oh, sounds good. Have a good dinner, uh, bad news player. This is the bottom. Gray, gray case. Kind of light, actually. Um, K75 layout, not my, uh, not, my, not my style, I suppose. Too cramped, yeah. I could, I could see that. Especially nowadays with the uh, Split F row, seventy-five percent that are out there. I can see why people would find it cramped, but uh, for the price and for what it offers, it's a pretty good deal. So, yeah, Kenny seventy-five. I think is pretty really nice board for the price. Uh, personally, I think it's one of the best bang for the buck. Hey, bad news blur. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, and have a good dinner. So it looks and sounds pretty good. I actually didn't realize that Jim K. Pulse was kind of like a dark gray and not a black base key set. So let's, um, so we're basically done here. It's like it's all the light that comes through the front of that plate. Eh, I feel like it's, oh, so from my view, it's not bad, actually. It's not too bad. So let's see, I see Q streaming. Oh, keyboard straps, that's right, that was Sam. He, he makes some nice uh, budget builds that are, I think, really good. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, keyboard underscore straps. But I might rate a Q. Um, question so top-down view is always gonna be worse yeah that is true yeah top-down view does look worse do I have any more upcoming builds yes I do uh, I always have upcoming builds um, I still have to build my own key, uh, key cult number 160 which is gonna be happening sometime soon um, have a few other client boards as well yo Alex what's up Alex Otos, hello. Gotta, gotta try the Jurassic Park test, but I, I actually have to go soon. So we're gonna see who is there to raid. I think we can raid Q, uh, Australian person. Um, I don't know what he's up to though. What is he up to even? I really need to set up a build command. I suppose he's building something then. But yes, um, upcoming sometime soon will be a personal key call to build. 160 revision one. Um, in 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 the near future, but there might be some other exciting stuff coming in very soon, actually. So just stay tuned. Um, I'll I'll drop a I'll drop a ping um, for those who are interested. Uh, but so yeah, overall, you know, check out my sponsors uh, exclamation sponsors. Check out my Discord and the socials are down below in the panels. But if you join my Discord, there are pings that I provide for like new group buys or restocks that kind of stuff uh, for sponsors it's optional for signing up 
and then looks like the font of this of the chat is really big I should fix that later um, but other than that um yeah check out my sponsors and uh, check out my discord if you are interested in um in like news about my upcoming builds and ask questions about stuff yeah I appreciate it, Hello Derby. <laughs> Adam Prestige. Um, Kiko's so expensive. Kiko's expensive in the aftermarket. I think retail price, they are pretty fairly priced uh, for the complexity that they provide. Um, so if you have a chance to participate in their pre-orders as well as raffles for when they have the in-stock key, uh, the kits, um, it's totally worth trying out. Um, I personally would suggest not to uh, feel too desperate about getting one and purchasing one in the aftermarket for I don't know would they go for like thousands of dollars now mm, I think that's a little, a little excessive you should think about it before like if it's something that you really want and you'll keep for a long time and you'll use and you'll get the bang for your, you know you'll get the bang for your buck then go ahead you know feel free to do, do so but otherwise I personally would not spend too much money for uh, any, pretty much any keyboard kit, um, just because I think that there's so many good keyboard designs out there, and um, honestly, like the difference between one and the next is fairly marginal. It actually depends a lot on the build you make as well for it. Um, so yeah. But anyway, let's go raid um, Mr. Q. I never spent over a group by price for a keyboard. There will always be new stuff that comes out. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the spirit, in my opinion. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it in general. And that's kind of how I've always felt about things in the hobby. Um, of course, if you collect like vintage and stuff like that, I, I, I can see why you would be more reluctant about it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there there is always a, a second chance, and like yeah, like new rounds, new new group buys. Alrighty, let's go read, read, question, is that how you spell it? Yeah. Alright, well, everybody, <laughs> this chance is for my true audience, is that how you mark it? <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, we're gonna uh, raid Q, uh, he's an Australian um, streamer, uh, and keyboard content creator, um, but he does builds and does like lubing and that kind of stuff for a lot of the Australian community. Uh, so let's go check out his stuff. I have I've actually never visited his channel before, so and he asked me to visit, so let's go do that, alright? Alright, well everybody, thank you so much. Oh uh, next stream, next stream will happen probably next week or in the weekend actually, depending on whether uh something comes in early enough. Um I'm waiting for something. Uh but as soon as it comes in I will plan something out for that. So possibly uh this weekend i normally don't have a specific schedule so i'll drop a ping in my discord channel or you'll see uh, my stream pop up on twitch if you have the notification set up all right well then everybody i'll see you later and thanks everyone for stopping by have a good one okay let's go see ya